Shalom and welcome to our 21st annual Feast of Weeks. This is part 22 of Preparing for Rulership. <laughs> I'm talking about Yahweh tonight. The one that made the product, the manufacturer. And that wrote the manual. And wrote the laws which govern his creation. And if you have a problem, come to the troubleshooter. Come to the right, true repairman. I'm the only repairman. Then don't you tell me how to fix you. You just uh, clay. Don't try to tell the potter how to shape you. See, I'm the one shaped you. I can bust your pot up. <laughs> Something mysterious about this name. Man that can do all this, the man with this name is all important. Yes, now we're beginning to see that it's more than an artificial tag, yes, which distinguishes one person from another. We can see that this name has a mysterious identity with its bearer. The bearer of this name is doing some mighty works. Yes, I think it's important to know this man's name, especially when he gave himself the name. Yes, he doesn't want you to call him by no name you made up. He wants you to call him by the name he gave himself. He see, Yahweh is self-named. So he won't accept anything else, but you calling him by his name. Now we'll look at verse nine read job chapter nine verse nine which maketh arcturus orion and pleiades and the chambers of the south now what are those constellations now if you don't understand constellations see you you can't follow me and be stupid a part of healing is that you get smart now you have to learn about the name that named these things. Name, he gave the name Orion. Arcturus, Arcturus, he gave that name. He gave, he gave the name Pleiades. And they represent something. Constellation. Constellation is what? Infinite number of stars, like Milky Way. It's, it's so many, and, and, and one of them till it looks like a Milky Way, just like scattered milk. Infinite number of stars, and one cluster is named Orion, and another infinite galaxy is named, it's a whole galaxy of stars. It's, it's so big, you have to look up the words galaxy and constellations. And, and it's, 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 so, it's so vast and so many until they just give a name to that, that one set of vastness. And you look over to another part of the heavens and you see another vastness. He gave a name to that. And then look at another part of the heavens and you see a, another vastness. And then you look to the chambers of the south. So these other, these other three must occupy the north and the east and the west. The south is so, so infinite. He just called them chambers. Then you have to look up chambers, see you. It's just rooms of stuff. No telling how many rooms in the chambers. Woo. 
and that's located in the south. Even out there in the infinite infinity of space, it's charted northeast, west, and south. Good gracious. <laughs> and then we occupy what is called a universe. And we're on a planet within this universe. Then there are constellations outside of this one. And this man, Yahweh, Spread all that out. <laughs> oh, what a man. What a name, Yahweh. And, and, and he said, I lay all this out and I call myself Yahweh. I want to be known by these, this Tetragrammaton. Say, so who did this? You hear Wildhead. I did it. Ah, Yahweh did it. That's who did it. Ah, spit it all out by myself. No, I didn't need any help. I did it. Well, why don't you tell us how you did it? That's what makes me God. I know what to tell, what not to tell. That's how I stay God. I know if you knew all about how to make the product, you wouldn't have to call, you wouldn't have to follow my manual. If you knew all about how to manufacture the product, then you wouldn't have to call me the repair man. You'd do it yourself. But I fix things where you're always gonna need me. You'd be born without any sense at all. You're gonna always need me. I have manufactured you in such a way that when you are born, you come blank. So that if you try to acquire knowledge outside of me, then the whole world will know that you are fool. Your days will be short. Your life will be full of sickness and misery and suffering and death and tears and sorrow and hunger and poverty and slavery. And you will have trouble all the days of your life without let up. I designed you like that. But if you want to be able to get your full destiny of peace and happiness in heaven on earth and live eternally, you got to come to the maker. I made you. So you got to come and worship my name, Yahweh. This is proof positive that you need Yahweh to be healed, that Yahweh alone possesses the knowledge of what it takes to heal you. What a man. What a name. Yahweh. It's in your dictionary. You have to look the name up. That's your step number one to being healed is look the name up. Then after you discover what you have never been taught before as a child in all the institutions in the churches that Yahweh is the name of the God of Israel. Then when you have been calling on the wrong name, you got a problem in your life. Your life is not happy. You are unfulfilled. You've had something missing in your life. Oh, you can't tell me you haven't. <laughs> Anybody that doesn't know his creator, something is missing. There's an emptiness in your life. I don't care what you have. You can have all kind of furniture in your home, and you can have the latest car, and your bank account can be overloaded. Hmm? And you can have on the latest designer clothes. Finest shoes that money can buy. You can have the most beautiful wife or husband that ever walked on two feet, don't worry. Huh? But without Yahweh, something missing in your life. I'm here to give you that which is missing. <clears throat> the fact that Yahweh is missing in your life means you're sick. Your spirit is sick. And when something's missing in your mind, then your mind is sick. Sick, your mind is diseased. 
You look up the word disease, you understand. It's something that's it's not at ease in your head. And it can only be filled with Yahweh. You got to have this name living in you. Then how can you have the name alive in you when you don't study it? You got to study it. Learn about this name. Then you'll discover that you can't be saved without this name. That if you call on any other name, you won't be saved. This is the only name under heaven whereby men can be saved. Job chapter 9, verse 10. Read. Which doeth great things, past finding out, yea, and wonders without number. Now when you get to vegetarian wonders, you still have not approached his wonders. When you name the vegetarian's wonder, it's like you haven't gotten started. Because his wonders are without number. I Meaning you, as far as you can go, forever, in infinity, you'll discover he still has wonders without number. I wonder how Yahweh did that. I wonder how he did that. I wonder. You'll wonder forever. And at the end of forever, you'll still have wonders forever. And ever, and ever, and ever. He doesn't just do things, he does great things. Past finding out. That means no matter how smart you think you are, you'll never find out how Yahweh does these great things. How does Yahweh make the sun? That's a great thing. I'm afraid that's past your finding out. And you want to call yourself smart? Well, how did Yahweh create the sun? Why does not the sun burn up? Or you can try to name the process, but how? You heard what I said. How? Why does it not burn up? Well, it's going to go out one day. When? Pass it out. How, when was it created? Oh, some billions of years ago. How do you know? What's your evidence? Were you there? Then what, what, how do you stand here and tell me that? What's your authority? I declare to you, it's past finding out, so shut up. Talking about how many eons a year, just shut up. I prove to the world, you're speaking out of your head, you are out of control. Without knowledge of the maker, the creator. What a man that does great things past finding out and does wonders without number. That's my man. Please turn to side two. Now the man that tells me how to live, that's done all these things, I think I would count it wise for me to do that. I'm sure he's the best knower of what I ought to eat.
how he created what I eat is a wonder and a great thing. The same ground with one seed brings up a sweet fruit and the same ground will bring up a fruit that's bitter. Same ground, that's a wonder. And that's a great thing, past finding out. <laughs> and I, I accept the man that can do this, knows what is best for me to ingest or eat or take into my body. And when, my, when I have made some mistakes in following Yahweh and broke his law, then he is also the best one to tell me how to get back on track. Because if something is wrong with your body, something happened somewhere. Now, if you didn't cause it, maybe your mother did it. Maybe your mother did something wrong. And if your mother didn't do anything wrong, then maybe your grandmother did. And if she didn't, maybe your great-grandmother did. Because you were paying the price for somebody doing something wrong somewhere. And see, you may not be at fault at all, but some of those folk in front of you did some outlandish things in Yahweh, against Yahweh. And then the third and the fourth generation down the line pay the price. Now, our parents and foreparents that spend the 310 years in slavery direct. See, somebody did something wrong, and they paid the price. And then it was written that at the end of the 400 years of suffering and being afflicted in America, that one would come to relieve us of our affliction. And I'm here bearing the name Yahweh, who talked to Abraham to do just what I promised. What a blessing. Now, when we can look out and see that one of us is afflicted, or one of us have a disease, or one of us have a sickness, or one of us have a problem with the product, that Yahweh created at one time in perfection, when we see it imperfect, it's enough to put the fear of Yahweh in us. Uh, or, or it should be. Yahweh let us see death to appreciate his power to give life. See, I don't know about you, but I'm just glad to be alive. Sometimes Yahweh let one be sick so the rest of us know I better do what Yahweh says so I won't be sick. Or so my child or my grandchild or my great-grandchild won't be sick. I better keep the law because I don't want that to come up on somebody that I feel close to. I don't want any blood on my head so I think I better do what Yahweh says because I can see he will surely punish those who are disobedient. I got the evidence, it's right in my face, I see that. In the meantime, I'm here to reform, regenerate, and repair. Heal your sickness, your affliction. Now most of us, when we think about healing, we only think of body. We don't have another thought. We really don't. We, we only think of sugar, or arthritis, or lumbago, or gout, cataract. You know, something that's physical that you can see directly. That's because we're so calm-minded. What brings on a physical sickness is that your mind is out of order. Your mind's out of control. Somebody's mind. Hallelujah, Yahweh. 
So to be truly healed is to start at the source. But you got to recognize his name first. This mysterious name, Yahweh. Job chapter 9, verse 11. Read. Lo, he goeth by me, and I see him not. He passeth on also, but I perceive him not. I told you earlier that I would prove that Yahweh can go right by you and you don't see him. That means he's a spirit, he's invisible? No! Walking, I walk right by you. You're sitting in your seat looking at me now and you cannot see me. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Unless you know who I am. To see me is to know who I am. And if you don't know who I am, you cannot see me. And here it is, right in this book. Yahweh goes right by you, but you see him not. He passes on also, but you don't perceive. You don't perceive me? Don't understand. You don't comprehend. Isn't that a tragedy to have God in your presence and you can't perceive that he is? Is it not a tragedy to think that God can walk right by you and your mind can't see him? Your spirit can't see him? And the whole world wants to see God. And you have God right in your midst. And to not see him, what a tragedy. Everybody's waiting on the sun to return. But the book says when he returns, the world won't see him. John 1, 10. Come on. The maker of the world in the world. Right in the world, walking around among the world, and the world can't understand, can't comprehend, cannot see, cannot perceive. Read. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Now in my Bible, that says, recognizes him not. That the world does not recognize him. If you don't recognize somebody, it's like not knowing. It's like he's in a disguise. He's, he's alive, but you don't recognize him. He's, he's living, but you don't recognize him. He walks up and knocks on your door and stands in right in front of you and talks to you, but you don't recognize him. See, he's still real because you don't recognize him doesn't make him unreal. He's not invisible in the sense that you've been taught ghosts and spooks, but he's standing right there in a physical sense, and you can't perceive this is God. Spread the heavens out all by himself. This man has spread the heavens out and standing in front of you, and you can't perceive. The one that shakes the earth out of her place, standing in your face, walk up and shake your hand, Put his tender, loving arms around you, and you don't know that this is God. Got his arms around me. Ooh, that's a tragedy. To have the one that laid the constellations out, spread all the heavens out all by himself, laid out the sun, the moon, and the stars, and sealed them up, come up and hug you, squeeze you. May even kiss you on the cheek. And you get to kiss him on the cheek and don't even know that this is God. <laughs> the 
the maker of the world. The maker of the world. Huh? Reach out and touch you. The maker of the whole world. Just reach out and touch you. Lay his sweet hands on you. And you don't understand who this is. This book said he would be right in the world, right here. And the world won't be able to understand right now who I am. I'm the one. The book say the sun made it all. Then come get in the world and walk around. And yet you don't recognize. Some will. Some will recognize. I know who that is. Yahweh, I know it. You can't tell me that's not Yahweh. That's somebody special, and I know it. You can't tell me he's not special. Here's the one that made the world come to his own people that look just like him, and they receive him now. You look up the name in the dictionary, and you see that Here's the name I was never taught about. And here's the man that's come bearing this name, teaching me about the name, teaching me about the mighty works. I'm reading it myself. I'm hearing it read myself. He's not making it up. I'm hearing the word itself manifest live in my own ear, in my own sight. Why can't I receive him? I can tell that he's not an ordinary man. I can tell that. He's not an ordinary teacher. I can tell that. But I have to get past him being just an ordinary man in my eyesight. The only way that you're going to understand that I'm not an ordinary man, you should understand I didn't come with an ordinary name. My name is Yahweh being Yahweh. That's not an ordinary name. Blessing to understand. Yes, sir. Who's talking to you? Yes, sir. I'm not running back and forth speaking of my own mind. I'm bringing you the living word because I'm alive. I am the word showing you the word letting you read the word showing you that the word is alive you can close your eyes but you can still hear the word you hear everybody reading from their books the same word this word is penetrating your heart this word is penetrating your mind this word is penetrating your soul this word is saying why don't you receive me this word is saying why don't you receive me the word is saying why don't you receive me come unto me Come and follow me. Look up me and you'll understand. Come unto me and I will give you rest. This concludes part 22 of Preparing for Rulership.